Greetings, my name is Alan Zenreich. Lauren and I are a retired couple living in Oradell, New Jersey, not far from New York City. We're Xtool customers and have been selected by Xtool to be among the very first hosts to participate in their demo room program. This program lets prospective customers schedule a visit with us, either in person or virtually, to explore Xtool lasers, with a particular focus on their rather unique P2CO2 laser. We're not salespeople, but we're certainly enthusiastic about the Xtool lasers that we have purchased and we're happy to share our insights and experiences and look forward to seeing how you are using or want to use these tools. So let me give you an overview of our demo room's current configuration. We've converted what was our home office into a demo room. We have another studio upstairs where I have a couple of Xtool D1 lasers along with 3D printers and all sorts of other gear. We have two Xtool P2 55 watt CO2 lasers. The first is the basic unit. The P2 has two built-in cameras, and they're used for object and material positioning. Here you can see a tiny pan-tilt-zoom camera that I've added to be able to look inside the unit when we're setting up or running a job. This is particularly useful because I have a large screen TV over here, and this way people can see a live view of whatever is on the screen, or with a remote control, I can actually change the view at any time to zoom in on different areas of the laser bed, or zoom out to get a broader view. The second P2 has the accessory riser base, which is great for items placed on the rotary tool, and the variable platform height makes it easy to accommodate thicker objects and material. Although not shown here, we also have the accessory automatic conveyor feeder that attaches to the riser and allows the laser to process very long material. Each P2 sits atop its own variable height counter on casters, which makes it very easy to move, especially when using the automatic conveyor. We also have an Xtool M1 with its riser base. This is a rather unique hybrid unit that has both a diode laser and a cutting blade. The blade is useful for cutting thin materials such as vinyl, which should not be cut with a laser. Like the P2, it's enclosed with a built-in exhaust fan, camera, and lighting, making it ready to go within a few minutes of unboxing. The exhaust from each laser currently flows into an Xtool smoke purifier. This removes any smoke and most of the odors that may be generated by a project. We also have areas for project assembly, tools, and material storage. And of course, we have a computer here that has a project open. For this demo, we're showing Xtool Creative Space, also called XCS, on our basic P2. This design is being engraved onto wood disks and has a QR code that points to our demo room host page. That's where you can request a visit, either in person or via a two-way video session. We're now looking at the design overlaid on a background of the wide view camera. Let's hide the background so we see only the design objects. This project demonstrates using curved text, creating a QR code, and using the Smart Fill feature to replicate the design over several pieces of material placed on the bed. Let's see how to make a project like this one. We start by creating a new project, then specify that the material is being placed on the slats. There are several other options, but this is the most basic. Next, pick the material from the list. Because this is a known material, the program already knows its properties, such as the material thickness, and several reference values for scoring, engraving, and cutting. If your material isn't in the list, you can supply your own values. Here, XCS has set the thickness to three millimeters, and it turns on the camera that was already zoomed in from the last project, so we'll hide the background again. Now we'll insert a circle, and then size it. and now we'll assign it to a layer. We like to name the layers to be indicative of what they do. We'll call this one border score. We'll set the object process to score 
and use the reference values suggested for this material. Now we're going to add a QR code. We'll put the web page address of our demo room into the content field. Then set the size of the image and drag it into position in the center of the circle. We can adjust the object positions later. Let's create a layer for this object and call it QR code engrave. XCS already knows that it's an image and that it should be engraved, but I want to tweak the parameters, making the power a little higher than the reference value so we get a darker image. Next, let's add the top line of text, set the font size, change it to engrave, then move it into position. We'll add the bottom text, but this time we'll zoom in, and by dragging the little green handle, we can curve the text. Now let's also set this to engrave. The curve of the text looks like it can use a little tweaking to better follow the border. Now let's select both text objects and assign them to a new layer. Right-clicking on the objects cause them to move down slightly, perhaps because of the curved text, but it's simple to move them back into position with the cursor keys. Then we can name the layer and set the properties for all objects currently assigned to this layer. It's time to save the project. We like to give the file names a letter suffix, so the next time we'll choose Save As and give it the next letter. This is a simple version control that lets us go back to earlier versions of the project. Now let's select all of the objects and align them horizontally on center, then group the objects together so they're treated as one object. It's time to display the background, and it shows the five disks already on the slats. Dragging the group to the first disk gets us close to the final position, but the close-up camera view lets us select an area and moves the laser to get a closer and more accurate view of the area. Zooming in lets us see if the red border is centered on the material or if it needs to be moved, and that's most easily done with the keyboard. Now we can hide the close-up view, select the group, and click on Smart Fill and let the software duplicate the group onto each of the work pieces. Let's check the position of the group on each disk using the close-up camera and making any tweaks to position. And if the material isn't round, we might want to adjust the group's rotation to align with the material. And of course, save the project again, this time using Save As and changing the suffix. Now it's time to prepare to run the project. Clicking on the Start button brings up a preview of the job. It looks fine, so we press Start and we get a message saying to press the lighted button on the P2. Let's switch to the camera I added, as it's a very nice way of showing how the job is progressing. While this is running, let's talk a bit about visitors and considerations for making demonstrations relevant to their needs. Instead of a tightly scripted presentation, a demonstration really should be geared towards the type of visitor. In general, they fall into a few categories. First, there are the people that are absolutely new to lasers. Perhaps this is even being given as a gift. Maybe they're already crafters, but they may not have ever touched a piece of equipment like this. They need to be shown the laser capabilities and how to have early successful projects. Safety needs to be emphasized as these are not trivial pieces of equipment. Then there are the people that are going to be upgrading from perhaps a Cricut type machine or from an open frame diode laser like the D1 Pro. Here we want to stress the types of things that the CO2 laser can do easily that a diode laser either can't do, for example, cutting clear acrylic, or does with some difficulty, or with a little additional work like engraving glass. And then there are the people who are very familiar with CO2 lasers and are looking at the P2 for its rather unique capabilities, combining its desktop footprint, dual cameras, contour surface mapping, and other items. For all visitors, it's good to find out if they're going to be primarily purchasing designs, perhaps at Etsy or another place, or if they're going to be designing their own. 
This might also give them some indication whether they should be focusing on Xtool Creator Space or perhaps use Lightburn, particularly when Lightburn fully supports the P2. It's also useful to find out the types of materials that they're either used to working with or want to work with. We can talk about things like wood, glass, acrylic, rubber, leather, ceramics, slate, and perhaps even marking some metals. I can show some examples, like these ceramic tiles with photos of our grand puppy, or perhaps some engraved slate coasters. And for wood, badges are very common, and I can show them how to combine engraving and cutting into a single job. I can show them how to do the QR code that we just talked about. And of course, one of the benefits of a CO2 laser is the ability to engrave glass without having to coat the material. So showing a rotary adapter is great for people who need to work with glasses or tumblers. I hope this little overview video gives you an idea of how our demo room is set up and the way I like to explain things, taking care to customize a lesson to the audience. So for you future visitors, it'll be a pleasure to continue to share our experiences with you. And perhaps you'll even leave here with a souvenir to take home. Maybe even a toothpick engraved with your name. Thanks for watching.